So tell me about the audition for Harry Potter. I mean, how was it when you first? Came? It was uh, to us. We didn't. We'd never been to an audition before in our life. We just went because it was an open audition, and then you all could go for it. And we walked into this big hotel, and they were auditioning for every single character. So there was a lot of people there. Um, and after about two or, two or three hours of waiting around to go in, uh, we actually luckily met the leading casting director, uh, Janet Hutchinson, who who just got us to read a few lines. Um, and it went it, at first we weren't very confident about it. We were just like, oh well, but we're never going to see these people again, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. It, yeah. And then luckily we got called back to meet with the director, producer and the scriptwriter. And that happened about four or five times around, around this time of year, nine years ago. Um, and then we had the final screen test, which is on a set and everything. And, uh, and then on the 1st of September, we were told we're Fred and George. So. And what was your reaction? I mean, hallelujah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, we, I, we quietly had, I think, well, personally, I had this thing in my head where I, I always had in my head, well, we, we're doing all right. Maybe if we got it, it wouldn't be that big a surprise because we, we keep getting called back. But at the beginning of the process, walking into the, uh, the, the, the hotel with all these people, you just thought, no, nah, this isn't going to happen. Um, but then when, it, when we first went for the read-through, That, that was when it sunk, when you're looking around the table and there's Alan Rittman, Maggie Smith, Richard Harris, uh, Robbie Coltrane, all sitting around, and you're like, wow, this is, uh, this is going to be special. Mm. So how was your first meeting with uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson? Yeah, that was quite cool. That was, uh, again, at the read-through. Um, we, we chatted to Dan very briefly, um, and Rupert quite a bit, obviously, because he was playing our brother. And then Emma just came with it and like, you're right, hi. hi. Like, and considering she was the youngest there by quite a lot. Yeah, she was like nine years old at that point. She had more confidence than I had when I was 14. So it was, um, it was quite, quite cool. But then I think that was, it's like an instant click. It's like school. Um, and we've all known each other now for nine, nine years. So we know, we know each other pretty well. So are your friends outside the set as well? Yeah, I mean, we hang around with quite a few of the guys. Um, when we're not filming, uh, we play golf quite a lot with Rupert. Um, go to a few music gigs with Matt Lewis, um, hang around with Tom Felson as well. Like we were in Paris promoting, and we went out, we went out clubbing one night and stuff. So it's it's good because, uh, as Jane said, we've been together for nine years now. So we've we developed a really strong bond. I mean, we've been together more than anyone is at school together. Uh, and you think how how bond how well you bond with all your school friends. It's uh, it's certainly certainly a unique thing. <laughs> How much for this? Five galleons. How much for me? Five galleons. I'm your brother. Ten galleons. You had no experience, acting experience before this. Um, how how has Harry Potter changed your life? Um, I, I'm not going to say beyond recognition because I like to think we're the same grounded people that we were before. But at the same time, I don't think we'd be sitting in the middle of Stockholm promoting a. <laughs> anything like this major we did. Film, yeah. so um, it's it's changed our lives in the way that we're personally I'm a lot more confident now in how I sp I mean if this was me I know I'd be younger anyway but I'd be very shy and I always, I always used to keep my head down not, be, not and I, not because I was arrogant or anything but just because I was very shy and um, this experience has kind of made me a lot more out there shall we say um, and then also it's just like it just a way to appreciate the world because we've been fortunate to travel all over promoting them as well. So um, we're very fortunate to see uh, uh, see the world and see how much something means to so many people. How rich are you now? <laughs> not uh, enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we've, we've done all right from it. Um, but the same thing is, well, it's not all about you know, material stuff. Like the memories we've got are absolutely amazing. Like, We went uh, last week, we were in Milan, and we went as guests of AC Milan around the ground. And stuff like, as big sports fans, stuff like that is money can't buy. And it's, uh, and also the friends we make along the way. And coming out on the, on the premieres and seeing all the guys who are waiting to see us, and their enjoyment, their excitement. Um, yeah, there were guys stuff, at, stuff like that is, is really special. There were guys at Leicester Square on Tuesday who had camped out since midday Monday midday Monday and they camped overnight to get a good spot for the, the premiere and you can't really put a price on how much this obviously means to people so it was um you know and they got absolutely drenched as well because it threw it down with rain and um you know it, I'm so grateful to those guys for making the effort. But have you had any weird uh, experience with fans or something like that? A few yeah um one gave us a potato in a bra once 
I don't know why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty weird. Um, Being chased through, we were filming in, on the second film, we were filming in Newcastle. Um, and so a few of us went out for a dinner. Then we were walking back and these people clocked us. So we were kind of like sprinting through Newcastle to the hotel. So it was just one of those uh, things like that. But on the whole, the, the Potter fans are very good. Yeah. But even, the, even non-Potter fans are quite funny. Uh, we were at a, a big festival in England called Glastonbury. And uh, we were watching uh, a band finish, and this guy came staggering through the crowd at night, and he was, you know, he was a bit drunk and whatever, and he was, he was staggering around, and he just looked at us and went, "You look like Weasleys." And we had we had our brown hair, hats on, poncho on, keeping dry, and just stuff like that is really funny to us because uh, it's normally the people you don't expect who uh, who'll say something to. You. Um, it'll soon be over. Uh, sorry to say, but. Um do you want to continue acting after this? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I mean, it's been, we've kind of uh, gone into it for the first nine years now, so it's all working wise, we know. Um, and I like to think we've learned quite a lot along the way from the best in the business and things you can take from different people and advice as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely like to try, to try it anyway, because I think we've, uh, we've got a good little, uh, good little number on our CV with being in these films. <laughs> mm. you? Yeah, the same. Um, I don't know, like I've said, we kind of got the bug now for what it is, and we we're very aware that not every film is like the size of Harry Potter. But um, like I say Robbie Coltrane on the first at the first premiere of the first film, he said to us, "Now this is like having a Rolls Royce for your first car. Like this will be the ultimate thing." So we and we've always kept that with it. So um, but we still would like to be sort of carry on entertaining in some way. Daniel Radcliffe was on a piece of theatre play, mm -hmm. and he took all. Yeah, he got it. He went. A bit, he went a bit too much. I don't think we would. We actually went to see him in that, um, and there was a girl sitting next to me. who was probably about eighteen, and uh, at the theatre there was binoculars in front of people's things, and she actually leant over and got my binoculars, and I, I said, to her, "What? Why? Why are you getting them for?" And uh, really embarrassed her. But I was, I was telling Dan afterwards, and he's like, "Oh." Well, it really, it really didn't phase him at all about getting his kiss off on on stage. But I think it, I think it would me. So are you are you scared of being typecasted as the goofy twins or? Um, may, maybe a little bit, um, but we did a uh, we've done a few things apart from Harry Potter, which have been quite good and quite different as well from Fred and George. Um, but again, if uh, if the only roles we get are cool, are, you know, funny guys, likable guys, and that's not that's not too bad. It could be worse. Mm.